One of the biggest mistakes I see new analysts make or people who want to break into this field is that they think data analysis is whoever writes the best SQL code, whoever writes the best Python code, who makes the best visuals on Power BI. But I'm here to tell you, none of that matters unless you ask these four questions. This video probably would have saved me months, if not years of my time, because I've made so many mistakes. And I was once you, I thought SQL was everything for data analysis. Whoever wrote the best SQL code is the best analyst, but that's not true. You could spend months, if not years, trust me, some data scientists spend years on projects. And if you don't have the right approach, all the work is for nothing. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over four questions of how to actually structure and approach the problem in data analysis. Stick to this video, I promise you won't waste your time and it will make you a much higher value data analyst. If you're new here, my name's Rohan and on this channel, I make all things data analysis related. If you wanna have a community of people just like you, check the Discord below. Tons of data analysts there making you projects 24 seven, networking, getting referrals. It's honestly a great space and I'm really proud of what that place has become. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, Data analysis isn't just in the sophisticated algorithms, the tools, the functions. It's actually the approach that you actually solve problems. How do you frame your analysis? How do you understand your audience and communicate the findings is what ultimately drives change and ultimately delivers value to your clients. So in this presentation today, I'm going to be asking you four different questions. One, identifying your audience. Two, defining the objectives. Three, trying to figure out a communication strategy for this analysis. And lastly, figure out what data you have. Each of these play a pivotal role in transforming raw data into an actual story that informs, persuades, and inspires action. So let's go ahead and dive in. Who is your audience? Data analysis literally begins with one question, and that is, who is your audience? Who do you want to influence? It's not just about knowing who they are, but you need to understand their perspective, their needs, and expectations. The more specific you can be about your audience, the better it is. Think of this like a restaurant. Let's say you, we were all going to a restaurant and the restaurant was general, right? You were a big fan of Chinese food or Indian food, but this restaurant was a general place and it had kind of everything, but the menu was so large, they weren't good at any one dish and you weren't impressed. A lot of the times it's better to tailor our analysis like we would tailor an audience's plate. Instead of having a generalized menu, maybe it's specialized in pure Indian food or pure Chinese food. So that's the same thing with analysis. We want to tailor our presentation, tailor analysis to our audience's palate. So this leads me into my next point. The more you know about your audience, the better your presentation will be. I can tell you this firsthand. If you know your audience doesn't understand the nitty gritty technical details, there's no reason to include what language you used, what advanced statistical method you used. Did you do an A-B test? They don't care. If you're telling a sales team all of this, it'll go over their head. It's wasting their time. All they may care about is the analysis and the recommendation. But let's say you're talking to a team of data scientists and you're mentoring a team. They may want to know what methodology you used, what tools you used, what your approach was. You have to go very in detail. So you need to make sure who your audience is and you want to narrow it down as much as possible. What department are they in? Are they in ad tech? Are they in consumer? Are they in publishing? Are they in finance? You want to know all these things and tailor your presentation to their background. Next, you need to understand your relationship to your audience. Are they your VP? Are they your intern? Do they already know who you are? Is it a completely random person? Because when you're giving a presentation, it puts you in a state of authority. And if your audience doesn't trust you or know who you are, you don't have that authority. You don't have that credibility. So you need to understand where you sit with your audience and you need to maybe establish that credibility in the beginning. If you're talking to interns, they already know you're knowledgeable. You've worked there for a while. So maybe you don't have to preface with what you do, how much experience you have. So make sure you actually understand where you sit with your audience. And lastly, I mentioned this earlier, different stakeholders require different levels of details and explanation. Let me explain. So whether you're talking to a non-technical stakeholder or a technical stakeholder, your presentation will be very different, right? Maybe you give a technical stakeholder like a data scientist, a research paper explaining exactly what you did or maybe a non-technical stakeholder needs to be walked through. So you have an actual live presentation where they can QA you, you can answer questions on the spot, and you can fill in any gaps they might have about what exactly you're saying. I want you to understand this step is more about empathy than it is about analysis. It's about bridging the gap between data and decision-making. And it makes sure that the work not only informs, but enlightens. So as we actually prepare our projects, ask yourself this. Are you speaking to your audience or are you just talking to them? 
because these are two different things. Really think about this. So the next question you need to ask is, what do you want your audience to know or what action do you want them to do? It's not enough to just simply present the data. We need to present it with a purpose. Whether it's actually to inform strategic decisions, highlight opportunities, risk, or just advocate for change. Your analysis needs to have clear and actionable objectives. And yes, there are different types of analysis. It's not just about doing exploratory data analysis. There are different types. For example, maybe your goal is to inform. Then you need to ensure your audience comes away with new knowledge that they can make their own decision based on their new fund understanding. If the goal is to persuade, maybe you want to tailor your analysis to compel them towards a specific viewpoint or action. And lastly, if your goal is to make action, you want to make sure your presentation includes a clear, actionable step that can be taken at the end. So you need to make sure you're crafting your message with a clear outcome in mind and also help in the selecting the most relevant data points for this analysis. It's basically like creating a map for a journey and you already know the destination and you want to chart the most effective path to reach it for your stakeholder. So make sure you really understand these three, what exactly you're trying to do. Most analysis will fall around these three buckets and it is tough. You don't want to recommend an action explicitly sometimes, especially when you're talking to a VP because that's their job to make decisions. What you can do is paint a story. You can lead up to what decision you want to do. Like if you're putting data and visualizations that clearly show that they should be making one decision, they will get the hint. Make sure you just present it away and then maybe they can make the decision for you. So we kind of touched about this in the beginning, but now that we actually identify the audience, we've defined our objectives, the next question arises, how do you actually communicate your findings? And this is where you have to actually use data visualization and storytelling, and these come into play. So the challenge is not just to present the data, but it's actually to present it in a way that engages informs and persuades people. Effective communication data analysis transcends just displaying a bunch of numbers to your audience. It's actually about selecting the right visualization for the right audience for the right time. The question I have for you is, will a simple bar chart convey a message or do you need an interactive dashboard with Tableau or Power BI? So the choice that you actually choose dramatically affects the reception of the message you're making. So some ways you can actually communicate are either live presentation or email. A live presentation could be like full control. You are answering questions on the spot. And as we mentioned earlier, maybe someone who's non-technical might need this. But let's say you're talking to a data scientist, maybe an email or a research doc is good enough. We're giving so much detail with so much technical content that the audience is understanding what they are learning. But you have to understand the audience is controlling how they consume information for something like this. But in case of a live presentation, you're controlling how the audience is receiving the information with your tone, the spacing, the words you use, the visualizations. There's way more autonomy in the live presentation, but unfortunately you don't have all the time in the world. So sometimes you do have to stick with the lower presentation such as an email or document. So the question to ask yourself is what level of control do you want or what amount of detail do you want to include? And I will say even for live presentations, feedback loops are so important and engaging with your audience, figuring out what questions they have, adapting your communication based on their feedback greatly enhances the clarity, the impact of your message. So remember, communication is two-way. Even if you're presenting, they may be giving you feedback on the spot. So what I want you to get out of this slide is communication of your analysis is literally just as important as the analysis itself. People think that data analysis is all about the hard skills, but soft skills matter so much, and that's where communication comes in. Like what medium are you communicating with? Are you communicating with the email, the live presentation, or do you need a recorded presentation, a Zoom meeting? All of this is very, very important. So your goal as an analyst is to bridge the gap between data and decision-making. And as you prepare for your next analysis, don't just share data, tell a story. Okay, so the next question is what data is available? And this is probably one of the most important things you can ask because this is crucial. This can make or break your analysis. This is where biases come in. This is where limitations come in. And your job is to make sure the data is actually relevant, accurate, no limitations, privacy, and any gaps in the data you're pulling from. So I'm gonna explain all of these. So identifying the actual data is the first step. Where is your data located? But you actually have to understand how relevant, how reliable is it? Is this data accurate? Is it up to date? Is it comprehensive? Do we need to include any other data sources? And does it even cover the entire scope of my analysis or are the gaps that need to be addressed? And if there are gaps, it's fine. You'll pull in other data sets. Maybe you'll go to a third party data source and pull some more. The next is the availability of it. Is it ethical to actually pull this data in? Are you, do you have data, but is it ethical to actually conduct an analysis? Are you respecting privacy and confidentiality? Because some states, data is really regulated, such as California or maybe the EU. They have very, very high regulation on privacy. So you need to understand, 
Are you respecting the privacy regulation and ethics around this? Responsible data use is not just legal, it's literally integrity in our analysis. So this kind of gets glossed over in a lot of data analysis training, but you need to have a high moral compass for ethics and legal regulation. Just because you have data available doesn't mean you should actually analyze with it. So you need to make sure you're talking to your boss or other people at the company if it actually makes sense. Next, understanding your limitations of your data is essential. No data set is perfect and being transparent about limitations help manage expectations and paint a clear picture of what your analysis can and cannot tell. So this actually fosters credibility for you and trust with your audience. If you're telling them, hey, at the end, this data set, this analysis may not be accurate because of this reason. So maybe you should keep that in mind while making your decision. And it just builds credibility. No one likes someone who says, oh, this is accurate. You need to do this. You need to be kind of gentle, paint a story and say, what limitations do you actually have? In some cases, data you want may not be available for you to use or it's in a completely unusable format. And this is where you need to be creative and resourceful. You can use proxy variables as a way to collect new data that fills the gap. Can you think outside the box and actually use data and transform it? Always, always be mindful of the future. Data needs and technologies are evolving and building a flexible approach to data sourcing and analysis ensures that your methods remain relevant and adaptable. So figuring out what data you're gonna use is literally as important as the analysis because your analysis is as good as the data you feed it. Next, you actually have to conduct the analysis once you get these questions. That, that's when you get into the fun part. You can get into how good you are at SQL, how good you are with whatever Python functions, Power BI, Tableau. That's when all of that stuff comes in after you ask these four questions. So just to recap everything, the first step is understanding your audience, not just a demographic or a job title, but the individual and what they are in terms of needs, perspectives, and expectations. And this is, comes from empathy. You need to have empathy as a data analyst and figure out who your audience is and maybe bridge any gaps that they may have. Next, set clear objectives. Remind yourself that every data set, every analysis, every chart, or every report should serve a purpose. If there's no purpose to what you're doing, why are you doing it? Why are you wasting your time? And this could be to inform, to persuade, to prompt action from your stakeholders. So make sure your work is always, always driven by intention. Communication. Communication is a pivotal theme. It is how we actually present our findings because this is as crucial as the findings itself. So through effective storytelling, accessible visualization, clear language, you can turn data into narratives that engage, enlighten, and inspire. Finally, acknowledging the power, limitations, and ethical implications. Responsible data use not only enhances our analysis, but also upholds integrity as analyst. So I encourage each of you to ask these questions before any analysis or any data analysis project you do. Let them guide you, challenge you, and inspire you, not just to analyze data, but use it to make change. And I know a lot of you on this channel are still learning the ropes and trying to get your first data analyst job or pivot careers. So you can also use this in projects, maybe have fake stakeholders you're presenting to. Never forget these four questions, always ask them. If you got any value in this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.